Hi, in some of the previous preschool, peaceful preschool at home videos, we've talked about general ideas for scheduling and vision planning, and we've talked about what supplies you should have, but today I just wanted to talk briefly about some more specifics for your daily schedule. So you kind of want to have a little bit of a flow with young children. For young children, it's so helpful for them to have a lot of rhythm in their lives, there's a quote, it's from the book Montessori from the Start, and that book is by um, Lillard and Polk. She says, as a general rule, the more routine and ritual in the first three years of children's lives, the more comfortable and relaxed they become, and the more in tune with their daily schedule. And so, you know, that that's just a very good illustration of how important it is for young children that we have a daily schedule that is pretty similar and kind of relaxed but also that there's some structure so for us we we start out with just room care personal care and to streamline that room care and personal care I try to make sure that there's not too many clothes in my children's drawers so basically when my little ones get up in the morning they're expected to make their beds and brush their teeth and get dressed and as much as possible I try to make that approachable for little ones so for instance having a step stool in the bathroom and making sure they can reach their toothbrush. And, um, you know, we generally actually don't use toothpaste with really small children because it's just too tempting for them to swallow toothpaste and it's often not very good for them. So uh, having it be really simple and, and easy for them to do the stuff that they're supposed to do. Have a little drawer for face cloths where they can wash their own face. And as you are teaching your preschoolers and even your toddlers to get up and brush their teeth and wash their face in the morning, you're developing so many good habits and good routines with them. Uh, also, making beds, you know, for simplicity's sake, I will often leave off the top sheet and just do a bottom sheet and then a quilt. And when I do the sheets, I'll wash the quilt with the sheets so that they don't have, have to fuss with trying to pull up a top sheet. With their clothes, I keep them in a low drawer and just keep the minimum of clothes so that it's easy for them to pick out a reasonable outfit. And if it's if there's clothes that I really don't want to see them in, I don't keep those clothes because you know I want it to be I want them to be able to go in their closet or go in their drawer and get clothes out and get dressed and then not have me going, no, you can't wear that. That looks horrible. So really just keep a minimum of clothes and keep clothes that work well together so that your child can get themselves dressed easily. Even using uh, for little ones clothes with elastic waist or you know that don't have tons of buttons so it makes it easy for them to be independent and you know it's going to help you out a lot with your younger younger like you know if you're if you're breastfeeding a baby you don't necessarily have a lot of time to get up and button 20 buttons on a on a preschooler's shirt so as you teach them to be independent, you're not only giving them opportunities to develop confidence, but you're also freeing up more time to take care of the other kids that you have. So after, you know, also picking up toys, try to make sure you have low baskets for toys. And again, just keep a minimum of toys in their rooms so that when they get up and make their beds and clean up their rooms, it's a real simple process and they can do it themselves. Um, you know, once again, so teeth brushing, talk them through that. You're building vocabulary skills as you talk them through that. And then after we do all that room and personal care, brushing teeth, brushing hair, then we move on to a little breakfast time. And I, I do try to teach my kids as young as possible to get their own breakfast. You know, I'll keep a healthy cereal and some whole milk and I'll teach them how to pour very carefully so I'm not saying that a preschooler is necessarily getting breakfast but you might have a slightly older child that you're teaching how to do it keeping bowls down low so they can get their own bowl out teach them how to make simple things like toast that's a real simple um, breakfast or or else doing up a big batch of scrambled eggs in the morning or a pot of oatmeal and then having fixings out so um, we do focus, like I said in another video, we focus on breakfast without a ton of sugar and preferably with some protein. Even yogurt is another good one because when your child has a lot of sugar and no protein, they tend to burn out really fast. So it helps them with energy and it helps them with um, kind of behavior moderation if they have a protein rich breakfast. And so then after breakfast time, will do some chores and this is a good time to work on practical life skills with your children in a Montessori preschool 
they actually have little trays set up that they can go get and do a practical life skill. But if you're doing preschool at home, you don't have to be quite so formal about it. You can just have a little chore chart for your child and then teach them some skills as you go. So I talked about a dusting cloth in the last one. I did find my dusting mitt. So this is a Norwex dusting mitt. And this would be just a really great activity for a small child. Throw the mitt on and um, wipe down some surfaces. Norwex also has a window cleaning cloth. I want one of those because, you know, the less chemicals, obviously we don't want our children using chemicals. So I, this is a, like a method bottle, but I've just been refilling it with water and oregano oil and maybe a little bit of vinegar. So my kids can use this to wipe down countertops. It's um, a clean, non- chemical cleaner so they can use that or um, you know for windows we'll use a, a mixture of vinegar and water but it doesn't work as well so if you can get a Norwex window cleaning cloth and then I think you just get it a little bit wet it looks something like this but so you know have a little have some rags and some healthy safe cleaners accessible for your children and then just walk them through how to do that another good activity for small children is matching socks and and usually that's something that we try to do together like I, I wouldn't ask a preschool to try and match socks on their own but if you sit down with them and you can um, dump the socks out on the floor and you can count them together and maybe even have a little race for sock matching so and it's really important that children learn some good habits relating to chores keeping their room clean and helping unload the silverware and sort it in the right compartments is another really good uh, sorting and categorizing activity that helps out in the family learning how to clear the table, learning how to carefully carry dishes to the sink, learning how to get their own glass of water, all these kinds of activities not only help your child become healthy, independent adults, but they also help you in the, in the house and they're really good learning skills. So um, some other ones, having a little broom and dustpan and giving them an area that they need to sweep up in the morning, having them, giving them a paper towel and a cleaner like this and having them wipe down the uh, kitchen sink area or the bathroom sink area or using a rag preferably uh, there's so many good practical life skills another another one is even just gathering a flower if you have any flowering bushes in your yard giving them a chance to help gather in some flowers and putting it in a little vase and setting it on the table or if you have a, a, a real easy to use we've tried to have little canister vacuums where they're easy to use and so with supervision I would let my young child use the canister vac and push it around or help vacuum the couch. Also with supervision I've taught you know a child as young as four or five how to scrub a toilet something that is only done with supervision but children like playing in toilets anyhow so might as well get them to help make it cleaner and um, you know you, again using natural cleaners vinegar water essential oils things like that. Some other good activities for young children is even just fluffing pillows or, or folding blankets up with you. So as much as you can do things with your young children, uh, tidying up with them, singing while you do it, the more you get together with them and teach them how to do things and kind of have a routine, the more they're going to learn, the more important it's going to be to them to keep doing things well. Um, after we do kind of a uh, this chore time, then we have basically what we would call circle time or morning time. Some people call it the morning time. Some people call it circle time. So we would gather together. And because I was homeschooling, often the stuff that we would talk about in circle time was a little bit over the head of my preschoolers. But they got the opportunity to learn you know, interesting places on maps and about interesting things that were happening in the world. And so all that really did was just build even a greater vocabulary for them. So if you are also homeschooling older children, don't don't be afraid to include your preschoolers in your morning time, even if it seems like it's a little bit over their head. So for instance, I would always make sure I had a little child-sized table, and then for morning time, I would set my preschooler up at the child-sized table with crayons and blank paper or coloring paper, and this would be a great time for them to learn to sit quietly and color a little bit and work on their own motor skills while they were listening to me read aloud or listening to us have a discussion. If I just have preschoolers, then this morning time would be a great time to read some good picture books together and sing some songs together and um, maybe say a prayer or memorize a poem together. 
So that morning time is just a special time for connection and for um, learning new things together. It's a really good time to go over the ABC song, for instance, or a simple counting song or a months of the year song. So uh, one of our favorite, you know, we would always do the ABC song, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that one. We also had a nice months of the year song that we we had got it from Discovery Toys and it says, you know, 12, 12, 12, 12 months, 12 months coming every year. So singing some of these little songs are going to really help your child memorize things that are happening around them. And I know you can look up some more um, song YouTube videos. I'll put some in the resources. Uh, I'll try and find that Discovery Toy CD and put that in the resources too because so many things can be memorized. And I know if you are into brain um, neurodevelopmental learning or or studying the brain, sometimes they say that learning things by music puts things in a, in a category of your brain that makes it hard to recall. So you might have heard about research like that. But, you know, for some things, you know, you you can store things in different ways. So for sure, say the alphabet, teach them their letter sounds, but it's okay to also have some, some things that you're learning by song. Also, when you're singing, uh, one of the a lot of the Waldorf schools do clapping and rhythm activities. So when you're singing, do some clapping with your kids or or play pat a cake, pat a cake, because clapping is a rhythmic activity and and all kinds of rhythmic activities work on some higher skills like that brain categorizing and um, you know even the even the movement of clapping help, helps coordinate left and right brain. So do some clapping. Also, don't forget to incorporate in your morning time a little bit of movement. So maybe some skipping or some hopping. Uh, I'm going to include a checklist of motor skills that you want to work on. So morning time might be a good time to just address one of those motor skills that you want, might want to work on, like, like hopping or skipping or walking on a line, some of these things. So, you know, our morning time might go anywhere from a half hour to an hour with our reading and talking and and singing and then after morning time would be when I would set preschoolers up with some independent activities and then I would move on to often because I was homeschooling working on math or science with an older child so that's when you want to get out those practical um, or those independent activities that I showed you in a previous video all the little puzzles and the number matching your lacing and tracing cards any kinds of you know baskets of easy toys they can play with wooden trains are a good one that can really keep them happy and having fun for a while so uh, getting out making sure that you have those good little accessible activities and also teaching them how to use them don't just assume that because they're on the shelf your child's going to know what to do with them make sure that you take the time before you set them loose to walk them through the activity and really instruct them give them pointers on how to use the activities. So if you have those phonics cards, make sure that you do it, model it a few times for them. Often children learn best by watching us do things and it's okay with your, you know, with when you're teaching the sounds just to say the sounds and then the next time have them repeat after you. Or if you're counting, you go ahead and count it just so they can see how it works to count. So don't feel like you're like you have to wait on them to answer every question. There's something called the three period lesson that they teach in Montessori, and the first period is simply showing them something and telling them what it is. So, for instance, if we were working on colors, I would say, you know, here's here's the blue cloth, um, here's the green bottle, and here's the pink sock. And usually, you'd want to use the same object. So, so once you teach them, once you've illustrated it for them, you know, blue, pink, green, then the next step is to ask them to um, name them themselves. So they're going to say, um, you're going to say which one is the green bottle and they, then they get to point to the green bottle and or which one is, the, where's the pink sock, show me the pink sock and then they can pick up the pink sock. And then the third one the third part of that three period lesson is asking them to name it themselves. So they would have to go and just without you prompting them say green, pink, blue. So, you know, the first 
take as long as you need to on the first period. Take as long as you need to on that first lesson of really instructing and, you know, counting one, two, three, or or showing them the shapes and saying square, circle, triangle. You know, you'll move on to the next steps when they're ready. But don't worry about rushing your kids. Everything that they need to learn, they'll eventually learn. I've had some kids learn their phonics almost naturally where it seemed like, wow, when did I teach you this? And then I've had other ones where I've had to review it over and over and over again. But all of them have eventually learned to read and eventually gotten the skills that they needed. So, uh, And please, with all of this information, if you have questions about how to apply it, Feel free to email me any questions. I'd love to be able to answer them for you so that you can have a smooth and peaceful preschool in your home.